Spun around, I see yellow and green. It's a beautiful thing. The sky's blue because the sun hit the water like bing. A reflection. Uh-huh. And that's all it is. Uh-huh. You can't stare at them long because your face will do like this. Look who's shining again. Oh, my, my, my. We been rhyming again. Oh, my, my, my. Ice be blind in the men. Oh, my, my, my. You come through time and time again. Oh, my, my. Check out my nephew, he jumped up in the window just to see you Look what he drew, a call house always wants to be with you He's just as jolly, he always begging me to let him see you I'm like, probably if you clean up and read a little You make people's eyes glow You got the weather channel bugging and you stopping when it's snow You my mentor, lovers name they kids after you New slang, nothing personal, we knowing what you been through You roll like one in a million, yo Okay family, so now we done made it back off the little break Hopefully y'all got y'all little libations uh me and my brother yaya in here getting it in um so now we're gonna get right back on point uh we was kind of touching on um the hiscos um and now we about to kind of kind of break down a little bit of how they went about influencing the region they was in um you know we kind of showed the uh, map for y'all to be able to see what area they was located in um as far as when you, when we when you say egypt kemet nubia um but okay so now on to the points family that we was trying to touch on get everything straight we had just kind of touched on about these cats being considered shepherd kings um but really um after looking at the entomology we realized that these were rulers of people that may have been considered shepherds or nomads uh they came in with a piece of culture that they had learned um, through the Indus Valley, uh, through some of those, like you said, Dravidians, I believe, if that's if I if I if I remember correctly. So okay, so now one of the ways that they went about, um, I guess, hijacking, uh, taking this spiritual system, uh, and and making it into what some people today consider uh, Judaism or uh even islam or elements of christianity just speak on a little bit about how did they or what was the techniques or how did they go about uh changing what was in the Nile valley into what we what we see four thousand years later um ultimately um it wasn't basically it wasn't one particular action that took place that changed the climate or the temperature of what was going on in uh, ancient Kemet. So really what it is to understand is that it was basically a tiered situation that happened. It was one event after of another event that caused another event from the other event that happened that made things happen the way it was. When the Ahiscos came in, yeah, like I said, we have to realize that their ruler Apophis was basically, um, like I said, he exalted Set or Baal over everything else. So he was basically the devil, what they would call incarnate, because of what he represented. And later on, you know, saying we'll explore and we'll talk about how their ideology affected what went into what they call the Old Testament or the or the Septuagint. Right. But for now, but for now, to understand is that. When they came in and they occupied for almost 200 years, eventually they were usurped by the original bloodline and it restored the kingship what was going on. So the fact that they were driven back into Mesopotamia, this is what fueled the events of what happened where they were able to come in and use other techniques to come back into the Nile Valley, basically with reinforcements. So when you have a people who have secondhand knowledge of the Nile Valley, and then they come into the Nile Valley and occupy, and they're able to get even a watered-down version of it from its actual pure essence. These people have a highly sense of intelligence and military strategics and understanding to maybe an intermediate level of what's going on with the cosmos and physics and science and things like that, and biology, things like that. This automatically puts them at, a, at an advantage to manipulate what's going on intellectually, even though they might not have necessarily the numbers to do so. So 
this was to me, in my opinion, this is what fueled the campaign where they were actually able to go back into the Levant and they were able to cause confusion and eventually morph themselves and, they were, and take over the, the image of being the true Hebrews. And when I say the true Hebrews, we're talking about the priesthood of the Heb Heru. And basically, the Heb was basically a Syrian, which basically was just the teachings of Tehuti. So we're talking about the precipice of something that is very arcane in knowledge and occult in terms of the dealing with the esoteric and exo, exoteric knowledge of which was transcribed down to the to the neophytes or the initiates versus what's given to invaders. Very different. Now see, Two different things. Now see, bro. And this is, my bad family. Let, let me just throw, ahead, let me just throw this in there. Sometimes I'm just kind of reflecting back on some words that I had heard uh, our master teacher, Dr. Henry Clark, say, and um, the impression that he left me with when he was kind of speaking about some of these invaders uh, and some of the hiscos was that uh, was kind of almost in stark contrast. And 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 this is not to disrespect the teacher, but this is to say that over time, um, more information is revealed. And, and, and sometimes the information at one point will leave a lot of people with a misnomer or leave them, um, I mean, second guessing, or at the, at the least it'll leave them with more belief to operate under compared to knowledge. And uh, he, he had, he had kind of made a mention of how, um, Famine um, and disease kind of drove some of these people into this region, but right. but you know when you really kind of look at it, that would kind of play into um, into this this story or this uh, impression that uh, white supremacy will want you to believe that these were some uh, humble uh, people in their right. origins and. You know, they just was trying to, you know, seek some type of refuge from the conditions. You know, just just trying to paint a picture of some people. Well, you know, honestly, the, the whole idea of, of in order for white supremacy to be acceptable by people who are not white is that it has to be an apologetic perspective about it. These people have to be, you know, uh, perpetually subjugated by some invisible force for you to, to have a relationship with these people that otherwise dictates that they come in and they destroy everything, they're a parasite. And this is the, the idea of basically white supremacy is, is basically, if I could give a, a, a correlation, is basically just an abusive relationship. You know, you come home and you get beat up every day, but this person tells you that they love you, but every day they're beating you up. You know what I'm saying? Whoa. So the whole idea behind this situation is that you have to realize that these people have basically they, they've concocted this story that they have some type of covenant you know with an invisible force that nobody else can see and they're the only ones that can communicate with them and just because they're underneath this this invisible um covenant and nobody else knows about it it's a big inside joke you know so you have to look at the, the mentality of the people that we're dealing with. They're basically sociopaths. You know what I'm saying? Right. So anytime that you can go into somebody's native territory, you can subjugate them, kill them, you know, rape their women, uh, make their men effeminate, and then you can turn around and blame them for their own subjugation. That tells you the type of mentality of the people that we're dealing with. And this goes all the way back to the Nile Valley. Because the same type of mentality has been imposed on us for thousands of years and has been precipitated through so many generations at, you know, an ever increasing, increasing, you know, attitude. So you have to look at things, what's going on in, in the sense that it's, that, that it's happening to us. It's not like we've been taking a break. You know, these things that, that the that the Hicksos have been doing, you know, are the same people who are controlling right now. Okay, now see, bro. All right, now let me let me bring us right back to where we was at because we went to a little sidebar with that. Now we talking about the priesthood, and this priesthood is really, um, because I guess the term that's associated with them is is the hippiru. Is 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 that right? Okay. Now in saying that, and these are these are 
what were later known to be called Hebrews, what type of uh, things did they do? I mean, what is this Hebrew, a uh, Hebrew, what, what, what type of, um, what of Nile Valley did they hijack? Uh, or I guess you could say um, demonize or, or um, corrupt, I guess that may be the, a better word, but, 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 but what out of the Nile Valley system did this Hebrew, uh, Hebrew, uh, what, if, if you could, in, in so many terms, what, what, what are they best known for? I got you. I got you. So in in, in the side note in there he had mentioned Tahuti. Uh Tahuti is also known as Toth. And uh and I think they just had a movie that came out last year sometime and they had Toth played as a black guy. 
wearing uh, wearing green, almost an emerald, which is kind of a, a little sad piece of sneaky information they slid out because Toth had the emerald tablets. Uh, you can also find an image of uh, or a depiction of Toth located, I think it's on the Jefferson Building Library of Congress or something. I'll make sure I had an image ready for them. Just on a little side note of like how they know the importance of Toth or Tahuti, I should say. Um, they, they, they understand uh, where he fits into this, but they, they keep it kind of hidden in plain sight by changing the names and the identities and kind of repeating exactly. his stories and like you said the allegories. Well, it's also the secret, possibly, in my, my opinion, uh, uh, to me there seems to be a lot of information that's valuable and a lot of misinformation that doesn't really sum up what the importance of who he is in the whole uh, construct of the ET system and worship and things like that. Because when you do a little bit of information checking and you do a little bit of research checking then you can see that the whole idea of Tahuti is transposed onto this biblical character of Yahweh. And this Yahweh character is also known by this uh, this four-letter character called the Tetra Tetragrammaton. And uh, the Tetragrammaton is very important in terms of a lot of um, a lot of metaphysical terms in terms of understanding biologically that it represents our DNA structure. It also represents the symbology, the numerology for what the Hebrews or the, the fake Hebrews or the Jewish people would call God or the deity or, or anything like that. So uh, it also represents, it breaks down into our um, gematria, it, it also breaks down into our 46 chromosomes. So we're actually talking about the idea of the creation of man himself and what that embodies. So this correlation between Tahuti and creation in the human being in, in terms of things is very important. But when we look at certain uh, dynamics in certain stories, you'll get an aspect of the comedic tablets or the comedic uh, papyrus, and you'll get an interpretation of who he was and what his importance was versus what you have, the interpretation of what it boils down to him being in the so-called Sumerian tablets, where he's called the initiative. So there's two different perspectives of this person. And then if you factor in, the uh, Emerald Tablets in his in the so-called autobiography of who he was and in, in his uh, so-called depiction and illustration of what Atlantis was and we had three different versions of something that we need to synthesize for this one person. So, or the so-called entity or metaphysically this question even exists in the first place. So, like I said, there's a lot of mystery uh, behind this Tahuti person but the, the authors of the, the Septuagint and the Quran and the Bible, they all know exactly what the importance is, and this is why they keep on replicating his his, his uh, attributes in these different characters. Now, see, on a on a quick side note, because uh, I want to go a little deeper in um, on Tahuti, but before we really jump all the way off on that, um, you was making a mention of uh, Yahweh, uh, the Tetragram. Or I think that's how you said, but um, you were making a mention of that. And so I had noticed, um, just kind of looking up some things, knowing that this was coming up, that the uh, word Mizram, um, right. now that word Mizram, from my understanding, I can double check on the, the entomology and the definition, wasn't necessarily a uh, country per se, but it was more of a region uh, that was, I guess, basically for the east, and I right. and I believe that was the east of uh, of Now Valley, uh, east of uh, Ethiopia, or in that re. Uh, but I believe the region that, that that's really referring to isn't necessarily um, on what we know as the continent of Africa today, but. I believe I could be wrong, so please correct me. You know what I mean? But I think that that Mizram is uh, really something to describe, uh, not necessarily uh, once again a country, but just more to say of a region that was locate, located located um, kind of over there in the same area that we're talking about, as far as where these Hiscos uh, were located at. Well, you know, a, a lot of this can be broken down just by 
looking at things in the proper manner, in the proper logic. Let's look at these terms that we looked at in the first place. Let's look at the terms that's just simple. Now Valley. If you're in the valley, you're not in the desert. You know what I'm saying? Simply put. If you're in the valley, you're not by any mountains. You know? So let's, let's look at things in a simple context. Let's not even go into, per se, um, a textual sense. Even though the language will always make that to the truth. We want to look at things, just look at what the information they're presented to us. We have this idea of people lost in, in, in the desert. And we have this, this thing about mountains. And then we have the valley, the Nile Valley. This lush plant, this uh, place that never, in history, in, in, in our historical records, never went through any type of drought. So when people are talking about droughts in their literature, then we need to understand, well, okay, where did they come from that they had a drought? Because in our historical records, we never had a drought whatsoever. We never were submerged in a well, So there was no big flood. So what's really going on here? Let's look at the information that's being given to us. Right, right, I got you. So let's 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 look at the whole even idea of the, the, the word Pharaoh. If you look back and look back in our actual records, you will see that we never used this term Pharaoh, not once. So where did this word come from? Where was this idea injected into our system? Where did it come from? These are simple questions. So when you actually go back and look back to the Hebrew and the Greek, then you'll realize that Mizraim in the Bible was never an actual place in what they would call the Nile Valley. Now, let's not get the misconception that just because it wasn't in the Nile Valley that it wasn't Africa or al or whatever you want to call it. It right. definitely was because this was all of our territory. Right, I got so, you. So when you look at things like so-called Suez Canal, you know, you look at the construct of, of when it was built, it's just a man-made line that's put in between these territories. Other than that, there's a straight shot from the Nile Valley all the way into the Levant. You know what I'm saying? You won't even miss, you, um, miss a hitch. So when you look at these people and they're talking about Mizraim and this, this word Pharaoh, you have to understand that it never existed in the place that it came from. Even if you look at the documents that they talk about in the Bible where they even mention Egypt or the word Egypt, first of all, is a Greek name. So let's look at that. If we were really if we were really called by their people, they would call us by our actual name. They would not call us by a Greek Roman name, just like they'll call, they identify themselves as being Hebrews or Israelites or anything like that. They would certainly have to identify who the either Hebrew we were so-called allies or we were people who subjugated them, whatever you want to call it. Either either way, they would have to call us by our name. So, when you look at the word Pharaoh, then you realize that this place actually was actually in Saudi Arabia. And that the, the, the leader of the tribe was his name was Sarah and Mizraim was just the tribe. So when you look at even where the first Bible was printed up, it was printed up in Saudi Arabia. So there's still this connection. Even when the, you look at uh, the so-called Dead Sea Scrolls and the Nag Hammadi and things like that, these were all found in, in Arabia. So there's still this connection of where the Bible and the so-called um, fake people, these imposters, came from this area and they injected their so-called antiquity into the Nile Valley. Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay. Now, now, now speaking, you know what? Hold on, family. Hold on, hold on. We just ran through real quick another up on our break real quick. So let's get this break out the way. We'll make this break nice and short. Then we're going to get right back after it because we got a lot of information to touch on. Because we want to make sure, because because what's happening, family, is we got a couple of cliques that's walking around in the quote-unquote conscious community, and they're pointing fingers at each other, having beef with each other, and they're basing it off of versions that they done got from people that really didn't look like them or really doesn't care about them. Uh, and, and and it's getting to a point where I'm going I'm to specifically call some of them out, like the ISUPK. Um, you hearing some of these guys, um, I mean, the mean people who look exactly like them, you know, and it's getting to a point where they trying to get scholarly 
about how they can uh, criticize someone who looks exactly like them. So, you know, we want to try to get a, knock all of that stuff completely out of the box because right now we're showing, because we, we, we are, my man already showed y'all that we, we, we got the priesthood um, that's called the Hipiru. And now you see where that name sounds very familiar, very similar, I should say, to Hebrew. So we gonna tie into that, and then we gonna we, we, we got a lot of we got a lot lined up. So let's not just break out real fast. Feeling the warm sun rays on your back as you walk. The heat driven, a theory I clung to deep within. His souls have to go through the sun to reach heaven and sense him retreat. Our souls bad and deceived, madam believe since dinosaurs and Adam and Eve that suns hovered to the extermination of us. It's a peephole which leads to the firm above us who could take a raindrop and turn it to glee